your eyesight? Right. No, Brandon, it doesn't Dude. get in the way into my <laughs> eyesight. The long awaited video and the most frequently asked question, Derek, why didn't I buy a GT350? And that's why today we are gonna cover the exact reason. Oh, I do wish I got one though. Like today, tomorrow. Oh my god! Fucking idiot. What is going on DVP squad? Thank you all so much for tuning back into the channel, man. We've been on the grind every week and I gotta say something really quick before we go any farther into Maverick the Mock and then Gordon's GT350. I don't know what's been happening, but you guys left your boy Blucifer hanging last night. I dropped the video, Blucifer, Electra. You know, I'm selling the car now. Selling the car, you guys left him hanging, didn't watch the video. Now he's like all pissed and not gonna run right for me. So it, it's for sale. $20,000 or best offer in Bitcoin. All kidding aside though, go watch that video guys because right now we are gonna talk about why I did not buy this car right here. And it seems to me a lot of you guys are, don't take this disrespectfully, but a little uneducated when it comes to the 350s. I know for the price I paid for this car, technically I could have bought one. 100% agree with you. There are a couple things though with the 350s that are kind of crucial. A big, big price tag and honestly a huge gamble. And I like to gamble. Don't get me wrong, I love gambling. I think I'm a slight addict to it, but I'm not gambling on a $20,000 motor. And we're gonna discuss why I have a Mach 1 sitting here and not another GT350 next to Gordon's 350, which by the way, looks so freaking good. And I'm a little sad. I'm a little, little, little sad, not gonna lie. When I set sail after selling Hades this is what I wanted I was looking up and down all over for a GT350 and fun fact so was Tyler but we could not find one that met our budget and that carried something super super important and we're gonna talk about that here in just a second but 2022 Mach 1 is what I ended up getting and you guys know this is kind of the replacement of this car the Magna rides essentially the same it has a lot of components from the GT350 it has the Tremec which is by the way amazing I love the Tremec over the MT82 overall though for made this machine brought it back from the dead and boom there you go 2021 Mach 1 was introduced and it, like I said it's kind of the replacement of the GT350 there is one huge huge thing though that we all know is not quite the same and this is retaining the gen 3 coyote the 5.0 and this you have a 5.2 liter voodoo motor which people absolutely love because you can rev them out they have a distinctive sound they sound so good especially full exhaust and all that like you know the 5.2s are awesome but there is something that you have to know about them and this is the exact reason why i don't have one al garden show us your gen 1 voodoo yeah, you know, the Gen, the Gen 1 Voodoo, it's a 2016, yeah, right? It's melted down right now. Oh, wait, what happened? So you're telling me the 2016 doesn't come with a Gen 1 Voodoo. To anyone looking at buying either a Mach 1 or a 350, from 2016, well, 2015 technically, there are 100 made in 15. But 2016, 2018 had the Gen 1 Voodoo in it. This engine had mixed results. People, you know, have 100,000 miles on them with no issues. Or you can be like, 
myself, my friend Tyler, my friend Finn, my friend Gabe, all Gen 1s, all blue for different reasons. Tyler's blue because of the secondary timing chain um, on his passenger side of the motor just completely went. This car, at 39,000 miles, I uh, started drinking one quart of oil every 1,000 miles. Previous owner took it into Ford. Ford said, okay, come back. We're gonna see if it's still drinking oil. He brought it back after another 1,000 miles. Sure enough, another quart was drank, so. They said, okay, we're gonna start the process and a new motor was put in. If you're looking at buying one of these cars and you're like, well, I don't know if it has a Gen 2 in it or not. All you have to do is pop off this coil cover, take this off, right here is a little sticker. And it says Rep 5.2 GT350R KA555AA. You can decode those numbers and it'll give you a build date for your engine as if it was made in 19, 20, 21, 22, or 23. That's the way you can tell if you have a Gen 2 Voodoo. If you do buy a Gen 1 car and it starts drinking oil and you are out of warranty, you are looking at $31,000 to replace your engine. That's from Ford. So what you're saying is you don't really advise people to take that route of a Gen 1 because it's essentially a crazy gamble. I, yeah, you're, you're literally, it's not playing with fire. You literally have fire in your hands. Yeah. You're gonna get burned. Gen 2, GT350s, clean everything are expensive, man. Yes. People don't realize yes. that. They're like 70 grand starting. So we're talking a difference of $20,000 between 19 and 20 compared to 16 to 18. Literally. Cars. That is one thing that Gordon obviously did. You know, he set sail for this car and he waited for the right one to pop up that had the paperwork with a Gen 2. My issue is, is I found a couple of them, but th I just didn't really trust the car as a whole. It seemed very off. Now there are, there are like, these deals out there don't get me wrong i was kind of impatient so to speak like i didn't want to sell hades and then go six months without a car because i couldn't find the perfect 350 with a gen 2 because that probably would have taken forever honestly when i saw the mocks and started reading about them and looking into them especially the handling package it almost seemed perfect because let's be honest gen 3 coyote with a tremec one of the most bulletproof systems and setups you can have in a mustang to date that's kind of why i was leaning towards this because you know they really did do a lot to this car I was talking, you know, to the guys at Ford when I went out for Barrett Jackson, and they were talking about the Mach 1s and how their Magna ride was very, very detailed when it came to the tuning. It handles so well. The handling package obviously comes with the cool front lip, has the big old meaty 305s and 315s, has these little uh, fender extensions for the wide tires. You get the big wing with the gurney flap. Everything just seemed perfect for me, at least. Now, do I wish I could have, you know, found a Gen 2 350 that was in a reasonable price range? in my budget which was 60 grand yes of course i would have taken a 350 all day long but i'm not gambling on a 16 through 18 it's just not gonna happen man because that motor this motor is like we'll say all said and done from ford with labor we'll say 10 grand just on paper who knows probably a little cheaper this motor like you said 30 grand easily because the motor itself is like twenty three thousand dollars for this motor 23,000 ish somewhere in there one day i'm hoping you know i won't get a 350 if i ever were to sell this and kind of do the last upgrade when it comes to the na tremec car it would be a 350r um gen 2 those are about 80 85 ish somewhere up in there which is i know it's mind-boggling it's a lot of money but the 350rs are just another animal that's like they are you know you, you get just probably the best mustang ever to ever be released is a 350r in my opinion it's manual right off the bat that eliminates a lot of cars on the market it has the gen 2 voodoo the crazy arrow such as you know this bottom lip which is a must if you have a gen 1 uh, if you have a non R350, please get the 350R front or bottom lip. It looks so good. Type OE 350R wing. They have a Type GR, but it's a lot smaller and doesn't look right. This is the OEM type spoiler for this car. The carbon goes so well with the color. It it's like to, subtle. It mounted to all original bolt holes in the trunk and everything. So if you own a 350R and you want exposed carbon, this is the wing to get. Good old classic 350 wheels. Bueno, another wheel that's in my top three, top four list from factory from Ford. These fenders I'm in love with though. Yes. Oh my God. Imagine if they put these fenders on the mock. Uh, we do have Cook's long tubes on standby already. This thing's gonna scream. One of the cool things, which a lot of people, it's gonna be a give or take, but the auto rev match and oh, yeah. the and the um the launch control in these cars i yep. love it man yep. i really do yep. i've got launch control i don't have auto rev match that came in 18. oh did they have Sadly. them in 18. Yep. did they have the yep. digital dashes in 18 as well 
three fifty never got. They never the did them. Yep. Wow. And maybe you, just a little too bougie for and, the track. And you can't swap it in either because the GT or the GT five hundred doesn't go up to the eighty two fifty. Oh my God, that's so right. No you one, can take no this. The, swap it in. So you could take these things, the eighty two fifty. That is large. so sick, man. Oh my God, I'd love to do that in mine. I'm gonna do that in mine. I thought Gordon had normal three fifty seats, but these are three fifty R seats. Good luck finding them. I've been on the hunt. Good luck finding them. Sitting in this compared to the mock, this feels interior wise more track oriented. I think it might be the leather Recaros in there. It, they feel good, but these 350 seats and 350 R seats, both of them, I don't know what it is. It it just feels like it's ready to go. You got this big old shifter here and then the steering wheel. Well, enough about the 350 talk. Let's get a little hype. Gordon, check out the mock, man. The, uh... The anthracite gunmetal color. I love it when Ford does stuff like that because it's kind of like the 0304 mock with the satin uh, wings on them. I also really love the sparkle and the grabber. Not I know, bad. the like, metallic oh, they finally put yeah. in looks so good. Why does Ford shy away from a flat bottom wheel in their track cars? How does that make sense? I really like the rear seat delete. The rear I know, seat delete they crushed so it. So good. Ford's OEM rear seat delete is just, it molds to every like, oh, you got a different mirror there. nook and cranny, it's awesome. Imagine how sick it would be if one day, just for shits and giggles, we ended up putting a 5.2 in the mock. That would be like a total, that would be that would be weird. It'd be weird, but it would be sick because no one has ever done that from my knowledge, a 5.2 in a mock would be super cool. I'm happy with my decision. I'm giving the Mach a run for its money. Um, the main thing I wanna do with this car, I told you, I wanna take it to VIR, I wanna do Dominion. I really wanna drive it. Like, I wanna drive, drive this car, which is gonna happen. And Gordon's gonna be there with the with the Shelby. Seeing a whole lot of track car content. So come see Absolutely, it. I really wanna get into it. Smash that subscribe button if you wanna see more. Tail the Dragon, these two will be there. I know Jake, when he gets his dark horse, he wants to take the dark horse. Yeah, Brandon definitely. will take Minion. So guys, I don't want you to get it twisted. Do I think all Gen 1 GT350s are bad? Absolutely not. It's just like the 2018 5 O's. When those dropped, there was about 50-50. A lot of people just had horrible issues. They were blowing up, self-detonating themselves, and just were junk. But then there was a lot of people out there right now with a 2018 that is running just fine. So I'm not saying every Gen 1 will completely take a shit on you when it comes to the 350. But a six, seven, eight thousand dollar Gen 3 Coyote replacement, that's doable. Honestly, that's doable. A $20,000 plus 5.2 Voodoo, that scared the shit out of me. I'll, I'll be honest with you. That's I do YouTube. I have connections with the automotive space. That scared me. And I just that's why I didn't get, do it, guys. Trust me. I really wanted one. Maybe one day, like I said, if it's time to move on and we're making crazy moves and you guys are tuning in to every video, even if it's Blucifer, not the mock, which you better go watch that video. Blucifer is pissed, all right? Lucifer and Electro, both back to back in one video. It's been over a year and a half. Go lock in, watch that video. Like I was saying though, if there was ever a time to where I could get one, GT350R, probably in race red or the white. Oh my God, it's the best. It's the dude. best. <laughs> this is the best spec, dude. All right, Gordon, I appreciate you coming out, man. Just kind of spilling the beans. What's your Instagram? GT350 Gordon. There you go, right down the screen, guys. Um, we're gonna get these two in some content for sure. I'm definitely, definitely, definitely doing Tail of the Dragon in this car. The car is protected, man. If you get and check out that video, Capital Audubon doing their thing, giving it the sauce with all the PPF, go check that out too. Them boys over there are awesome. And this thing is ready to go see some curves. I have no worries now. No worries. The only thing I worry about is the windshield, which can be easily be replaced. So everything else ready to rock. And these two are going to absolutely crush it on Tail of the Dragon. So that's coming soon. And I just want to thank you all so much for watching. Drop a like up on this video, guys. And make sure to drop a comment. Which one are you taking? You're going to take the GT350 or are you going to take the Mach? Comment down below. Thank you all so much, man. Go check out yesterday's video. I'm going to keep saying it. Lucifer's pissed. Hey, look, what do you want me to do? He's on my ass. Check out yesterday's video. Check out all the other videos we dropped this week and all last week. Five videos this week, five videos last week. We're on the grind. And we're going to bring you more content tomorrow, 8 p.m. We're back tomorrow. It's Friday. We ain't taking off until Saturday, Sunday. But even then, we're filming. All right, fam. Much love. Deuces.